Alrighty, here we go, uh, match number three. And uh, in some really weird shift in like the space-time continuum, we actually have Becky commentating on her own match. Yeah. Yes, on the, the left-hand side uh, on, what, what deck was it that you were on? I'm on Black White Zombros. Oh, alrighty. And uh, on the right, we've got Justin playing a red-green uh, god variant. Oh, start off with a, I, I feel like that's just a, a really good start. That's kind of what you want every single game. Exactly. Uh, I want that or Crypt Breaker. Yes. Conceal. Okay. It, it, I mean, if you were to choose, what what is the, what's the better opening? Is it the Dreadwander? Dreadwander. Yeah. Okay. It swings for more sooner and you're trying to be the aggressor in the deck. Yes. Um, happy to trade with the Bloodlust Insider if he chose to. I don't really want him to give a bunch of big things in coming haste. And mm -hmm. at this point, I don't really know what my opponent is playing. That's that's funny because <laughs> I was literally just about to ask when you see game trail into uh, Bloodlust Insider, what do you think your opponent's on? I honestly had no idea. I saw those two and I was like, this is some spicy stuff, but I was happy to see no turn two play. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Especially with the turn. I, the same can be said for the white red humans deck the turn one bloodlust insider is just that is just the best time to have it because it just puts all of your creatures just ahead of curve yes when you're able to attack with them you're on turn you attack with your turn your two drop on turn two yeah exactly uh, your three drop on turn three it just feels so good throwing down the lord of the accursed just yes. pump all my zombies and yeah. hopefully hopefully make some more with the crypt breaker too mm -hmm. Interesting that um, Justin is just prioritizing this. I, I, I can understand wanting to, to keep the Bloodlust Insider, but just he is just taking a uh, metric crap ton of damage here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I think he does decide to hit the one that I had yes. in the field, so I can't swing for more, which was smart. Um, but I'm still swinging for five, which is pretty good. At this point, I seem to remember him leaning back in his chair and going, ah, game one. <laughs> and, and though I still feel like he could have maybe had a better hand, maybe him not knowing what I was playing was kind of playing it safer than he should have been. I think mm -hmm. he should have definitely tried to be the aggressor more often than not. Um, he must have also drawn, drawn the Blood Rage Brawler because yeah, there's he, no way. He did just draw the Blood Rage Brawler here. I do, I do like this play. And Blood Rage Brawler feels like it's, if maybe not in the rest of the standard in its time in standard is going to be a very strong card, yeah. especially because it's going to be in standard with uh, quite a while with the the, the various madness cards. Yes. But uh, just like he did there, discarding the fiery temporary, killing your lord, and now he's got a four three, and that's that that feels like is a pain for your deck to deal with. Oh, it yeah. Until I get another lord and my two two zombie tokens trade with it very efficiently, then it doesn't feel too bad. But I don't mind taking four here. I seem to remember also like egging him on, like yeah, give him haste. Yeah, sweet. yeah. C come on, come on. <laughs> At this point, I don't mind you tapping two of your creatures because I'm definitely in a more position of power at this yeah. point. Well, you're also just so far significantly ahead. You, for the first three or four turns, the, yeah, only, exactly. the only play was Bloodlust Insider, neither attacking nor blocking. And uh, Justin's already at eight. And then here, you attack... Uh, attack just with Dreadwander. Dread yeah, just with the Dreadwander going down a six. Play a Binding Mummy and then go into another Crypt Breaker. Hmm. I wonder what you're going to be doing with that Crypt Breaker <laughs> and those three zombies. And this is actually the reason that I decided to play the deck. Um, the ability to have Crypt Breaker and the second ability to tap three zombies and lose a life draw a card. Um, it just makes it so much better than a lot of the other aggro decks in Standard, I feel, because you can get yourself the card advantage. And the thing that beats, if you're playing like an aggro deck versus an aggro deck, the thing that you want to do is garner that card advantage as much as possible. Uh, definitely. I, it just... You actually have some way to, to get back on cards, maybe if you you fell a little bit behind against some of the controlling decks or even some of the, the mid-range decks, I could see some amount of them kind of like shutting down some of the early plays. Yep, exactly. Um, oh, just zombies on zombies, zombies, on, zombies, on, zombies. On, zombies. on zombies. I do think that I miss a trigger here, actually. I believe possibly two, two, two triggers. Two, could have <laughs> tapped down the, uh, two, two, to the creatures. But I think also at this point, I'm like, I see, I can tell that he's an aggressive deck. He's got two bless, Bloodlust Insiders. Mm -hmm. He could potentially play two Haste creatures, so I also don't think that I mind keeping all my things up to possibly block, possibly just draw more cards. Yeah, oh, definitely. I, I, I can see that. I think, though, with the uh, Binding Mummy to blocks two, yeah, it goes to three, mm -hmm. but... But here, I just turn all my stuff sideways to draw cards. Yeah, and I think you're firmly uh, at the point where you're drawing cards, but any zombie you play, you really, you don't necessarily want the game to go to this point, but 
just play five zombies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not even, because the uh, Wayward Servant is enter the battlefield, not cast, right? Yes, it yes. is. Yes, okay, so sure. Cast is diagram. Yes. So, sure. You just have five zombies enter the battlefield, and mm -hmm. you just win that way. I think at this point I'm also stuck on some land, and I have a Liliana's Mastery in hand, so I'm trying to like, get to that fifth land drop to cast the Mastery, mm -hmm. and so that's why I don't mind keeping my zombies in their little piles to tap and do things accordingly. The Hazaret scared me a little bit when I first saw it. I was less scared knowing that it already had haste, and two of his creatures were to give things haste. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still really not really an advantageous way to block here. Either way, I'm still going to tap a bunch of creatures and draw some things. And yeah, I, I think he definitely wants to block with the Hazard. Yeah, the, I, the Hazard can block, but I feel like the fact that you utter the sentence, the Hazard can block, based on like, the abilities of the card, I think you're in a not-so-great position. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you're having to keep your Hazard back for blocks. And you're just drawing infinite cards. It's like you're virtually a control deck here. Draw two. I'd, Pretty much. I'd love to. I bet Mark would have loved to draw two cards a turn. Yeah, <laughs> and then I almost miss my draw step because I'm just drawing other cards. Ah, Cast yes. mastery, trigger wayward servant. Tap. I even again miss the trigger on binding mummy, but to tap down the whole thing. <laughs> but who cares? You can still even if. Who cares? I still attack for lethal this yeah, turn. Yeah, you swing out with everything. Blocks the three biggest thing or the mm -hmm. four biggest things you kill a bunch of his creatures and uh, just deal lethal damage regardless. Exactly. And I think here he does think that he can block, but forgets that mastery gives plus one, plus one to all of my creatures. Yeah, so even with all of the blocks, he still takes four here. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I smell a, a handshake coming in very soon <laughs> with the, the GG. He does, he does try his very hardest to think of a way to beat the situation though and I, I can applaud uh, him for yeah, that. Yeah, give him props. You still take a still take uh, four. Still take four. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think he, he plans to do? Because I know in my experience playing against that game one, in the moment he played like blossoming defense, mm -hmm. I was like, oh that's gonna be problematic. Yes, uh, that's true. Um, well, I guess we can take a look at the the, the sideboard here. Uh, it's interesting, we've got things like uh, so he's red green gods, but he's we saw you know a couple blue lands. Which mm -hmm. uh, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, that's that's really strange. Like it seems the mana base is off. Yeah. Um, but it looks like he wants the like there's four negates in the sideboard, uh, and then there's a couple of what blue spells in the 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 main board. Yeah. Oh, and he's playing You're a in Nissa sensor. Sensor. Yeah. It it just feels it feels a little bit weird. Maybe he's got maybe he's going for that like gotcha factor but I could see like sweltering suns coming in and well negate doesn't really feel that good against you not yeah, quite no uh, magma spray seems pretty good though magma spray is definitely worth putting in I'm fairly certain he does put it in and yes. I think against him I put in I definitely put in the declaration stone in place of my um, what the Oh, exile. The, there we go. The Anguish other exile spell. Yes, I trade exile spells. Yeah. That that makes sense. That makes sense. I can see. I can see that uh, you're both fairly aggressive decks. Yeah. Uh, if you want him to take virtu t virtually take his turn off to crack the clue to be able to draw a card, mm -hmm. whereas you're not losing the life with the anguish and exactly. making you lose out. I guess on the instant speed, mm -hmm. but. I'm not sure that I actually changed that much. I might put in Gideon, I don't quite remember, but I remember just thinking, Anguished feels bad, we'll put in Declaration and Stone yeah. and see if that can resolve through. This feels like it's gonna, the way it ends up playing out is the kind of aggressive deck versus like mid rangey type deck where I feel like he should be a little bit more advantaged. Mm -hmm. uh, but the interesting thing I feel about the Zombies deck, especially the Black-White Zombies deck, is it's not really just like a low-to-the-ground aggressive deck. It has the ability to just make all the zombies just massive. It does, very much. Especially because in comparison to the mono-black version, you're playing four of the lords, yeah. four of each of the lords. Uh -huh. And a lot of the mono-black ones only play like two of Liliana's Mastery. Which, yeah, that's, that's crazy. And so... Justin says, okay, my creatures are a little bit bigger, maybe I can get in with like Hazard and stuff and maybe I just start shooting you with Hazard, but you say, no, I've got an army of like four fours and five fives yeah. and I make zombies every single turn that are just massive. Exactly. Uh, I, I, I feel like uh, in this game you're you're very well positioned. I, I feel so too. I mean, we'll see game two exactly how it plays out and who gets it. Yeah, all right, see you in game two.